Alexis Tienes alongside Janusz Michalik and Janusz. Janusz, Janusz, Janusz. <laughs> Manchester United have done it. They have done it. They have knocked Liverpool out of this FA Cup. This was such a brilliant game, brilliant fight from both teams. But let's look at it, of course, from the winners, Man United, in the last week. I mean, they were able to get a point in the league from Anfield at Anfield. And now here they are knocking out Liverpool from the FA Cup. Um, how big of a result is this for Manchester United? And what does this say about this Ole Gunnar Solskjaer team? Well, massive, of course. It's a continuation of this unbelievable momentum that I think uh, only players on the inside with the manager saw it, right? Because uh, we've all, I think, in all circles, uh, uh, criticized Man United or uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer early in the season. But you can see this progress, this, you know, uh, a snowballing, if you will, not just in the Premier League, but here in the FA Cup and and you know it's almost difficult to speak about this game in in isolation right as as Manchester United being Liverpool which in itself of course is always a big for one or the other because there's still ways to go before you get that trophy but I think it sort of sends a message uh, even through the Premier League that not only Manchester United are at the top but obviously they've asked some massive questions of of Liverpool uh, the champions as well so uh, you know, psychology and all of this plays a big role because I, I, I can only imagine that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer ahead of this game would have been in the dressing room saying, look, mm -hmm. at Enfield, the last two big chances belong to us. However you look at the game, because Liverpool were very good in the first half, but forget it, right? That was a draw. But you kind of bring it to the players saying, here's your opportunity, not just in the FA Cup, but send a message, not just to Liverpool, but perhaps to Manchester City and, and, and everybody else in the Premier League. So, so I think I, I can almost imagine being in that dressing room at Old Trafford, that's what they would be thinking. Massive, of course, in terms of possibility of a trophy, but more so... Uh, continuation of that effort uh, and that goal that they set themselves up for. Well, like you said, brilliant game, brilliant fight from both teams, uh, a nice little back and forth. Of course, Manchester United conceding first, which is something that Bruno Fernandes even said that he feels that they do concede um, a little too early too much. We'll get to that in a bit, but what impressed you the most about how Manchester United went about this performance? Well, I, I think, again, there was nothing forced there, even though uh, Mo Salah scored early, right? And, you know, was back and forth in this game. And there was even a time, uh, you know, when it was a 2-2 draw that kind of Liverpool were coming into it. You never saw panic. Where in the past, I, I think it's in terms of that attitude, right? That once you start doubting yourself, and I think Liverpool is at that stage right now. And, and by the way, I understand that, uh, you know, uh, the, because you, you pay a price for success or excellence that, that Liverpool has had in those two years, right? Manchester City has seen that. We can go to Real Madrid and Barcelona when they were at their best. It takes so much. So again, I'm not using this as an excuse, but there's been questions of Liverpool. What's happening? You can see that, that physically and mentally, they're just not at that level that they were because it's just too much. And now Manchester United, of course, wouldn't care about that. And even within that game, you could see that something extra, something that was missing for Manchester United, because for months and years, there's always been a doubt, right? And when you think to yourself, oh no, not yet again, not yet again. Now kind of it's reversed just a little bit. Although I, caution, I still caution a little bit with Liverpool because you have this massive, massive talent that may be missing one or two or three players who hasn't been missing players this season anyway. But, you know, uh, in the context of the Premier League, uh, you can still see that if they do get on the run, you never know. I, I don't think you write off Liverpool, but small margin for error for Liverpool from now on. Uh, that's for sure. If we just get away from this FA Cup win that United deserve, even in the league, you look at, you know, Spurs now and Manchester City not too far away. You look at schedules. I mean, Liverpool better get on that run rather quickly or, or else it'll be too late. Well, talking about the mental aspect as well of the game, and just um, now looking at um, individual performances in this one, I suppose one of the good things for Liverpool is that Mo Salah got on the score sheet. We knew he has been coming under a bit of criticism and pressure, the fact that he's not been finding the back of the net as much as you know we're used to him doing. Um, mentally, is this a nice sigh of relief for Salah and probably he can carry that momentum on to some of the other performances? 
Yes, but I think he's been, of all the three front players, he's been okay in terms of scoring, right? Uh, I think the bigger issue for Liverpool, of course, is the, the front three together, how much of a threat the, they are. That partnership that was so wonderful, even though, you know, at times was selfish, but they were all doing their thing. And so so I think Mane coming off the bench obviously didn't make the same impact as, say, Bruno Fernandes coming off the bench, right? Uh, and I don't want to point that towards Mane sometimes the way it goes, but Bobby Firmino had a great pass uh, to release Mo Salah on the first goal. But I think when you see them all together, uh, we didn't uh, see that today. But I think that's the bigger issue, not necessarily the individuals, because Salah individually has been good. Mane, obviously a little bit off, but his work ethic is always great. And Bobby Firmino has been very hot and cold as of late. And, you know, not to mention, you know, the midfield maybe not the same as well. They're captain and missing and all of that but again I think this season more so than ever excuses go out the window in terms of injuries and COVID because at any given moment everything can change so again I mean I even look at Manchester City I mean looking losing Kevin De Bruyne that changes things the form they've been on and you know Jamie Vardy is now out for a few weeks as well I think this is just going to be wonderful and again uh, apologies for straying away from the actual FA Cup game, which of course is very important for Manchester United because it was a, let's be honest, this was a well-deserved win uh, uh, today. So uh, you could argue the, 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 the Premier League draw one way or the other. Uh, I think today here slightly, you know, uh, Manchester United were the better teams in general. Um, speaking about Donny van de Beek now, though, um, because he, of course, got the chance to start. Um, Bruno Fernandes had a bit of a break before he came on and does what Bruno Fernandes does so well. And that's put Manchester United in some very favorable positions. But what did you think of um, Donny's performance today? Look, I think he was OK, but, you know, everything seems to go against you. Right. It's just difficult. I, I think they, they honestly I mean, we've seen Van de Beek in Holland, you and yeah. I, you know, for a number of years. I think the intentions were good. But when the team, you know, remember that I, I think Van de Beek was brought into as well because there was a sense that Manchester United aren't there yet. And we all thought that and all of a sudden you're getting on this run where everybody started to play. Right. I mean, Van de Beek was brought in when Paul Pogba was injured, had COVID. Nobody was happy with Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba wasn't happy with Manchester United. So you get that as a little bit of cover because you're saying to yourself, what's happening here? And then, unfortunately for Danny van de, Be van de Beek, the results are starting to go your way. You know, Cavani, although not in his position, comes in. Bruno Fernandes is doing what he normally do does, which is wonderful, uh, right? Paul Pogba is starting to play. McTominay is playing well. Fred's been good throughout the season. So... I just think all of that conspired against Donny van de Beek. And it's kind of unfortunate because it really, I don't think it's anybody's fault because when he does come, come on the pitch, he almost has to be twice as good as everybody else. And that in itself, it's impossible. I mean, how, how do you do that against Bruno Fernandes or Paul Pogba when they're in their pump? So I feel for him just a little bit because I don't think he can play himself out of this. I really don't. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.